All right, folks. In this video, we're going to talk about the periodic twins. Okay. Well, more specifically, three twins: atomic size, ionic size twins, first ionization energy twins, and uh, electron affinity twins. Before we discuss those twins, let's take a look at how we define atomic size. Well, essentially, atomic size uh, is the um, the radius of an atom. Okay. And there are two types of radius. The first one is a van der Waals radius, okay. And the second one is a covalent radius. Well, for van der Waals radius, it's about the two neighboring atoms that are not bonded together. For instance, krypton. Well, we know that uh, krypton is a um, single atomic molecule. In other words, one krypton atom is one molecule, one krypton molecule. Okay, so between the two neighboring krypton atoms or molecules, there is no chemical bond. Okay, and the um, the, the the krypton radius is defined as the half of the um, distance between the two neighboring um, krypton nuclei. Okay, uh, how about uh, covalent radius? Well. Uh, this re this type of radius is about the two atoms that are bonded uh, together. For instance, the bromine here, bromine molecule. It's a diatomic molecule. It's uh, there is a single bond between two bromine atoms. Okay, and um, again from this picture here, you can see that uh, the covalent radius again is half of the two neighboring bromine uh, nuclei. Okay, it's about uh, 114 picometer in this case. All right, now let's take a look at the atomic size trend. This picture is from your textbook and uh, gives us some data regarding um, the um, uh, radius, atomic radius or atomic size of some common elements through the periodic table. Um, Two twins, okay. Two basic twins. The first one is the trend, uh, atomic size trend, in one group. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, first group. Okay, well, when you go from top to bottom, from uh, hydrogen to uh, rubidium, the atomic size increase. Okay, shows you here. So in in a single group, from top to bottom. Atomic size increases, okay, and you can find out the similar trends for the other groups. Okay, there are a very few uh, exceptions, but we are looking at the overall trends. Okay, so uh, do not worry about these exceptions. Okay, this is the uh, the atomic size trend for one group, but how about the period? Well, for a period, like uh, let's just use this period. Okay. As an example, um, it looks like overall, when you go from your left side to right side, the atomic size of those elements will decrease. Okay, so this is what this uh, arrow uh, um, uh, about. Okay, and you can, if you use this trend, if you use this period, it shows you the similar trend from your left to right, atomic size decrease. Okay, so this is a um, some uh, very basic trends uh, for atomic size. Here is the reason. Well, for let me go back. Um, for the the um, atomic size trend in one group, you go from top to bottom increase. This is quite uh, easy to understand because when you go from top to bottom, you got more and more electrons, right? Um, that's why when you have more electrons, the atomic size will get bigger and bigger because you have more electrons outside in the, nu in the nucleus. Okay, so this is not that hard to understand. But how do you explain the decreasing radius when you go from your left side to right side in one period? Let's take a look at uh, next slide. Okay. This slide shows you uh, why the atomic size uh, decreases when you go from your left side to right side in the same period. Okay? In order to understand this, we do have to uh, discuss the effective nuclear charge. 
But before we talk about this uh, uh, concept, uh, we do have to take a look at the shielding effect. Okay, what is the shielding effect? Let's use a lithium um, uh, atom as a, uh, as then as an example to 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 demonstrate. Well, here this is a here this is a nucleus of a lithium atom. Okay, because it has a three protons. So we label that as a three positive charges. Remember, each proton is plus one. So, and um, so the um, nuclear charge, the actual or the you know the nuclear charge for the lithium um, atom is uh, going to be three plus. Okay. Sometimes we use a capital Z to represent um, a nuclear charge. All right, and uh, we know that for lithium, the electronic configuration is the um, 1s2, oh, 2s1, 2s1, okay? In other words, you have two electrons on the 1s orbital and one s electron on the 2s orbital. Here, these are the two electrons on the 1s orbital. They are closer to the nucleus. Okay, they are the core electrons of, uh, of lithium. And here, this is the one electron on the 2s orbital. It's a little bit further away from the nucleus, okay, because the 2s orbital has a, a higher energy. All right, now, what's the shielding effect? Shielding effect means this inner electrons will repel the outer electron. So this outer electron will experience less attractive force from nucleus. In other words, those two inner electrons sort of shield the outer electrons. Okay, so um, that is that is called a shielding effect. Okay, and uh, now we can talk about the effective nuclear charge. As we mentioned, because of the shielding effect from this uh, two 1s electrons, the 2s1 electron will experience less attractive force from nucleus. Then the actual attractive force uh, experienced by this electron is called effective nuclear charge. Okay? The, the, actual effective, uh, the actual nuclear charge of uh, lithium nucleus is 3 plus, but because of the shielding effect, Apparently, that uh, this uh, 2s1 electron will experience a, a nuclear charge that is less than 3. All right, that is called the effective nuclear charge. Here, um, you can see that it's a very a, um, a rough calculation about the effective charge, effective nuclear charge experienced by this uh, electron. It's pretty much like uh, the uh, nuclear charge, 3 plus, minus the um, two negative. Uh, you know, two, um, two, and this two comes from the two electrons on the 1s orbital. So roughly it's about uh, 1 plus, okay? So 1 plus is the uh, effective nuclear charge experienced by this uh, electron. The actual value um, for the, um, for the uh, effective nuclear charge of those 2s1 electron is 1.28, okay? It's close to uh, is close to uh, 1. And uh, the effective nuclear charge of the 1s uh, electron, each one of them is uh, 2.69, okay, very close to 3. So in other words, those two inner electrons will experience pretty much the full um, nuclear charge from a lithium nucleus, okay? Now this is the uh, effective, effective nuclear charge. Now these numbers, okay, let's take a look at this um, Table. This table here, this is the um, elements from the second period. And here, this Z, capital Z, as we dis uh, discussed, it's uh, a nuclear charge. Okay? Uh, so if you take a look at those numbers, essentially there's nuclear charge for each element. It's just the number of the protons you have. Okay? And this 1s represents 1s orbital. And these numbers okay, are the effective nuclear charge experienced, experienced by the 1s electrons for these uh, elements. And uh, here, this is a 2s orbital, and these values 
For these numbers, we present the effective nuclear charge experienced by the two s electrons for these elements. And again, two p orbitals. These are the effective nuclear charge experienced by the two p electrons of these elements. Okay. Now, if you take a look at the trend of effective nuclear charge, you can see that when you go from your left side to right side in this period, the effective nuclear charge increase. Okay. When you experience the more effective nuclear charge, that means those electrons will be attracted by the nucleus more tightly. And then they will get closer to the nucleus, so they are going to get smaller and smaller regarding the atomic size. And that is why we have this kind of uh, atomic size trend in the same period. When you go from your left side to right side, atomic size decreases. Okay. Now, one question you may ask me, hey, Lei, I don't think this is right. Because while you have, um, um, when you go from your left side to right side, you get more and more electrons, right? And, then, and you just mentioned that the more electrons you have, the atomic size will increase. How come this one, you know, it shows you the, the opposite? When you go from your left and to right, atomic size increases, uh, decreases. This is against the uh, increasing trend of the electrons. Well, here is the thing. Okay, let me explain this. So remember, when you go from your left to right, indeed, you are getting more and more electrons. Okay. However, pay attention to where those electrons go. I do have to use the electronic configuration to demonstrate this. Okay. So let's just use boron. Start, let's just uh, start from boron, okay? From, from boron to fluorine, and uh, base, uh, just uh, put, uh, discuss the, this effective nuclear charge, okay? Now, for boron, if the, um, the um, electronic configuration is the helium 2s1 or 2s2. 2p1. Okay. For carbon is helium 2s1, 2s2, 2p2. For nitrogen, it's helium 2s2, 2p3. And for oxygen, helium 2s2, 2p. For for fluorine, helium, okay, two S two, two P five, and for neon is helium, two S two, two P six. Okay. Well, as you notice that when you go from boron to neon. Yes, you are getting more and more electrons, but those electrons, all of one by one, they go to the same subshell, which is 2p orbital. Okay. Now, when those electrons are in the same subshell, they they are gonna interfere with each other. Okay. They are gonna repel each other. However, the repulsive force experienced by those electrons in the same shell would not be as much as the repulsive force they experienced from the inner electrons. Okay? Let me use the analogy to, to, uh, to explain it. It's sort of like you go to a uh, football game, okay? and uh, the, the people sit, sitting in front of you, okay? um, during the football game, they suddenly stand up and uh, you know, wave their hands, so um, they are going to block your view to the football field, right? So it's sort of like a shield, the shielding effect, okay? The people in front of you, in the, in the front row, will block your view, okay? But for those people who are in the same row as yours, they can stand up, and they are not going to uh, block, uh, block your view, right? So it's the same thing here. The 2p electrons 
will experience the more shielding effect from two s electrons and one s electrons. But for those two p electrons, they are not gonna shield each other too much, right? Okay, so that is why when you go from your left side to right side, the increasing um, number of uh, proton is a dominant effect, a dominant factor for those 2p electrons experiencing higher attractive force. Okay, so when you go from your left to right, um, the atomic size gets smaller and smaller. Okay, this is the um, um, periodic trend for uh, atomic size. Now, the next thing is about ionic size. Okay, well, this picture from your textbook shows you the atomic size of some common ions. On your left side, cations. On your right side, anions. Okay. Before we talk about the ionic size, I do want to do some very quick practice uh, regarding the electronic configuration of ions. Okay. So let's start. Cations first. Okay. Well, remember how you uh, get uh, get a, a cation? Well, you have to lose electrons from a neutral atom, right? Let's uh, take a look at the lithium. Well, lithium, if you happen to remember the electronic configuration of lithium, okay, let me write it here. Lithium is going to be uh, helium. Oops. Helium 2s1. Okay, after it loses one electron on the 2s orbital, it becomes lithium 1 plus. Okay, so for lithium 1 plus, the electronic configuration would be just helium itself. Would it be just the core electrons left? Okay, how about sodium? Well, sodium electronic configuration, neon. 3s1. Okay. Well, in order to get uh, the sodium 1 plus cation, you lose the th one electron on the 3s orbital. So that will be just the neon itself. Okay. Core electrons left. All right. How about the beryllium? Beryllium, this one here. Okay. Beryllium, the neutral beryllium atom. The electronic configuration is helium 2s2. Helium 2s2. All right? And after it loses 2s2 2S2 electrons, then it becomes the beryllium 2 plus cation. So the, oh, the um, electronic configuration would be just helium itself. Okay, so if you notice beryllium 2 plus and lithium 1 plus, they have exactly the same electronic configuration, helium. All right, now magnesium. Magnesium, neutral magnesium, um, electronic configuration is neon 3s2. Okay. Well, after it loses two electrons on the 3s2 electrons, you get magnesium 2 plus. Therefore, for Mg2 plus, the electronic configuration would be just the neon itself. Okay. And again, as you notice, for magnesium 2 plus, Mg2 plus, and Na plus, they have the same electronic configuration. Boron. Okay. For neutral boron atom, the electronic configuration is helium 2s2 2p1. Okay. Now if you lose all three electrons here, then you got the boron 3 plus. Therefore, for boron 3 plus, 
electronic configuration is helium. All right, so again, for these three ions, cations, they have the same electronic configuration. Aluminum, neutral aluminum, that is going to be neon, 3s2, 3p1. Okay, after you lose these three electrons, you got your alum aluminum 3 plus. So, aluminum 3 plus electronic configuration would be neon itself. Okay, all right, and um, I would highly recommend that you try potassium and calcium. Okay, or if you want, you can try uh, gallium also. Okay. You will see the similar trend like this. Okay, it's uh, it's a good uh, practice. Now let's take a look at those uh, anions. For oxygen, neutral oxygen, the electronic configuration is helium two s two two p four. Okay. Well, in order to form O two minus. You have to get the neutral oxygen atom has to get two electrons. Therefore, for O2 minus, electronic configuration would be helium 2s2 2p6. Okay. One thing I do want to remind you here is. If you take a look at this electronic configuration of O2 minus and the electronic configuration of neon itself, I'll write it here. For neon, here this is a full electronic configuration of neon. It's helium 2s2 2p6. Okay, so a very common question is. Since O2 minus has the same electronic configuration as neon, can I write the electronic configuration of O2 minus as neon? I'll put the question mark here. Well, the answer is no. Okay. Why, why is that? Well, the reason is, remember, these are these are valence electrons, okay? Since they are valence electrons of the O2 minus, we do have to show it. We do have to show them. If you wrote the uh, electronic configuration of the O2 minus as neon, you will treat those electrons as core electrons. In other words, tell people these electrons will not be part of the reaction for O2 minus, and that is not correct. For O2 minus, these electrons will be part of the chemical reaction of the O2 minus. Therefore, we have to shield them. In other words, we have to shield the valence electrons for those anions or cations, okay, if they have any. Okay, all right. So not this is the thing that I want to remind you. Now let's continue. Fluorine. Well, fluorine, neutral fluorine, it's neon, or oh, it's helium, 2s2, 2p5. Okay. And uh, in order to form F minus, you have to get one more electron. And this one more electron will go to the 2p orbital. Therefore, the electronic configuration of the F minus would be helium 2s2 2p6. All right. For sulfur, sulfur neutral sulfur is neon 2 uh, 3s2 3p4. In order to form s2 minus, you have to get uh, two more electrons on the 3p orbital. Therefore, s2 minus. It's going to be neon 3s2 3p6. Okay. Again, if you take a look at this electronic configuration, it will be exactly the same as argon. But 
It's the same reason that we mentioned here. You cannot write the electronic configuration of S2 minus as argon. Okay, in other words, I'll write it here argon question mark. Okay, but apparently, because of the same reason, no, we should not do it. Okay, we need to show the um, valence electrons. All right, now chlorine. Mm, chlorine, neutral chlorine is um, neon. Okay, neutral chlorine is neon 3s2, 3p5. In order to get uh, Cl minus, you have to get uh, one more electron. So the electronic configuration would be neon 3s2 and 3p6. Okay. Again, we cannot use argon to represent the Cl minus electronic configuration. We cannot use the neon to replace uh, to uh, to to uh, represent the electronic configuration of F minus. Okay. And also, I want to remind you, if you compare the electronic configuration of O2 minus and F minus. Both of them have the same electronic configuration. All right. Okay, and you can try the selenium two minus two minus and the bromine minus if you are interested in them. Um, but like I said, that first twenty elements are required. Okay, so as long as you know how to write the electronic configuration of the ions formed by the first twenty elements, you are good to go. Okay, and that's why I highly recommend that you try the potassium and calcium by yourself. All right, now here is what I want you to do. Um, we talked about the um, the electronic configuration of those ions. Now I want you to take a look at this uh, data. These data um, shows you the atomic size for lithium neutral lithium atom. And uh, the ionic size for lithium plus, okay, for instance, for the uh, same thing here, okay, and uh, beryllium, uh, boron 3 plus, and aluminum 3 plus, and here you can see that 136 for F minus and 184 for uh, S2 minus. Uh, the uh, unit for this uh, number um, is uh, picometer, PM, okay. Um, and uh, this picture shows you, just the uh, picture shows you the size difference between the neutral atom and its ion, okay? So this is so that you cut the neutral atom to two halves and cut the leaf, uh, the, the cation to two halves and put, this, uh, put them together so you can see the change um, or trend better, okay? And this blue, uh, this is the... Um, uh, half of the um, anion, and this is still the half of the neutral atom. Okay, here is what I want you to do. I want you to take a look at these data, the atomic size and the ionic size, and I want you to go to this slide. Okay, you can find out this uh, the exactly the same slide on the lecture notes. So if you don't want to copy the the this slide. You can just um, uh, get a copy of uh, lecture notes. Anyway, so I want you to take a closer look of the data shown on this slide, atomic size, ionic size, and come to this slide and fill out, fill out those blanks. Okay? Uh, I think this is a good opportunity for you to um, improve your independent learning skills. Um, instead of letting me tell you everything, I think it's better for you to look at the data and summarize the trends. Okay, so um, please pause this video and spend uh, you know a couple minutes, check the data, and try your best to fill out those blank. Okay, we will uh, we will um, work together on this uh, slide. Okay, please go ahead. <laughs> 